that's no moon. Hello there, this is Jack for That's No Moon. We're coming back with another painting tutorial and this time we're going to be doing some object source lighting. This is basically where we've got an object such as the lightsaber or the uh, grate on the floor. This is going to be emitting some light and it's going to be bouncing off of Obi's clothing, his hands and his boots. So this is my first time trying this, this method so we'll, we'll, we'll explore it together. Essentially what we've got here is we've got two light sources. We've got the lightsaber and this orange light on the floor. So the lightsaber is is pretty much going to hit his hand, hit the top of his knee, his sleeve, and maybe a little glow on his chin and his shoulder there. The important thing to remember is that light travels in straight lines. It's not going to go around the corner, so we're not going to see anything on the back of his arm, um, you know, sort of like here. Make sure you can see all this. Um, on his back or any, you know, anywhere like that. So the floor grate again, the light is going to be coming straight up. So we're looking at the underside of his tunic, the inside of his legs and his boots. And that's the only, only place we're going to be getting uh, light hitting that. The key with OSL is to keep your light source lighter than the, the, uh, the reflection. So we've gone for a really, really pale color using uh, Adriatic Blue from Scale Colors. I've put a lot of white into that to give get this sort of like cyan-y colour on his lightsaber. So that's going to be brighter than what we have. We're going to use pure cyan for the OSL. So we'll just crack on. Um, what you really need to decide is where the harshest highlight's going to be. So if we start with... Just a bit of white. So the white I'm using here is the Pro Acryl one. Really recommend this. Super smooth. It's already quite thin. So you don't really need a lot of water with it. And then what we're going to do is, because we're going to start with the orange, we're going to start the boots, because the, the boots are a, a shiny leather, so we're going to be getting a lot more refined reflections. So you'll get something like that. doesn't have to be too precise we're just sketching out where these reflections are going to be at the brightest they're typically on sharper edges something along the lines of that. So you can see in there, we've just sketched out a highlight. We'll do the same for the other side. Try and get the lamp in there. It's already in a bit of shade. To really sell this effect, I've gone for quite a dull colour scheme on Obi. There's not a lot of highlights on this. Uh, we're going to get something on his toe there. So then that way, because you've got no highlights on the clothing, it's going to make it look like he's in a darker environment, like inside, or on Mustafa, somewhere like that. And then the light is actually having more of an effect. And then we're going to do the parallel line here. We've got another bit of light there. I think that's making a bit of sense. As I said, I don't normally do it like this. This is new territory for me as well. So in the past, I used my Shatterpoint minis as examples. Let's get mace down. So on this Grievous, might be a bit hard to see, but on his shoulder there's a very dull green 
right on the tip same on this arm here and on the top of his knee that's just by taking the color of the lightsabers and then really thinning it down with water and brushing it onto them surfaces same with this purple here i don't know if you can see it on the robes it just reflects a little bit the thing is with cloth because it is soft it's going to absorb light more so that's why we've gone for starker highlights on these leather boots so let's go in underneath just do the bottom of this tunic again don't go up the sides light's not traveling around corners this bit at the back is going to catch some we're not going to do any of these bright white highlights on his trousers because we're further away from the light source we're in shadow as well so everything's going to get absorbed and uh, not be as, as stark I think that's looking good the majority of this effect is going to come from that lightsaber because it's a tube it's the lights bouncing off in all directions we've got a very specific source so I suppose I could do some on the bottom of his fingers this take a bit of artistic liberty here put highlights on the bottom of his fingers so then we're going to get a contrast from the tops of his hands nearest to the lightsaber here where we're going to get a blue really cool blue light and then we're going to get a really warm orange light underneath i think we're actually going to start to sell that a bit more by going over here again sharp edge let's highlight it that's not going to be the only reflection we are going to then drag it up so it, it sort of dissipates into the rest of the miniature. Um, where else could we go? Do as many or as few of these as you like. As long as it's going to sell that effect. So that's that. Then let's do some for the lightsaber. First obvious one, his thumb is right next to it. So let's get that highlighted. As is the side of his hand here. So you can see right next to each other, we're going to have a red and a blue reflection. So that's going to hopefully look cool. And what is the point if it doesn't look cool? Then let's put one bottom of his tunic here. Let's put one side of his robe there. Side of his robe here. Then we've got all these folds as well in his cloth. In a darker environment, that's where the white is going to catch. So we'll just pick them out. I could be talking absolute twaddle here. But you don't come here for professionalism, you come here for it to be made a little easier, hopefully. No professional. But practice makes perfect, so if I ruin a mini, you won't. There's that. Where else could we go? Let's go on the top of his knee here. So this is where you want the reflection to be the brightest. We're not dictating where all of those reflections are going to be. Yeah, we could have a little catch. 
much of light there. So that's where I want the starkest ones to be. It's very sketchy, it's very rough. But this is where the brightest light's going to be. So let's start with the turquoise. So going, going in with our Adriatic Blue, I've put a tiny bit of white in. Remember we want it duller than the light source. The light source has to be the brightest part, otherwise you're going to ruin the effect. So, thin it down. So we want to glaze this on. And when I say glaze, take the back of your hands. You can still see the colour of your skin through that. See what I mean? So that's what we're doing. This isn't going to be a one done. Brush it over. Don't need to be precise to where the white bits are. Because that light is going to spill out into the surrounding area. I'm just going to glaze, let's try and blend them edges in. Not so much on the boots, the boots you really need to sell that leather effect, otherwise it's going to look like he's wearing cloth boots, but everywhere else. Now this could just be a lot of silence as I try and glaze this in. Glazing isn't the easiest because your paint is very watery, it's going to run everywhere. But we need to bring it under control so that white starts to look less like white with a bit of blue over the top of it and more like a really bright highlight of the blue. So to glaze you basically just take your brush and you move from where you want the darkest or the dullest colour to be and drag that pigment to where the brightest is going to be. So you can see on his, on that bit above the, his knee, is already starting to blend up into here. And that's just because we're dragging that pigment down onto where the white is, and it blends the boundary. If you want to skip all of this rigmarole, you could just take the Adriatic Blue, thin it right down, and just brush it on. You don't need to do this white step, because doing this white step does add quite a bit of time. So, you, you, you see what I'm getting at, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here, finish it off, and then come back and do a bit of an art attack and say oh this is one I made earlier so we'll see you in a moment okay it's been about 30 45 minutes of glazing and bringing together so what we've got here where we left off we had white lines on the sleeve that we were glazing over and what I've done there is I've basically softened them with layer upon layer upon layer of glazing the only thing I've corrected is the white line on this trouser. I thought that was too stark in the end. So I've gone back over the base color and then put the blue glazes over the top. So we've got a little bit of a glow there. We've also got one on the top of a toe. 
and then it comes up onto his shoulder. So you can see how that looks like it's glowing onto his clothing. It sort of stops there. It doesn't go past the middle of his body. It's bouncing off his hands as well. And then if we hold the miniature like this, you can start to see the orange underneath. So we've hit the sleeve, the hands, and the bottom of the tunic there. We've also gone onto the boots. I don't know if you can see that in there, it's quite dark. With the boots, it did get a little tricky. The light's not very good, and fluorescent orange is a hell of a paint to try and control. So what I did is I used fluorescent red from Scale Colors and just mixed that into the orange. And it was just a case of glazing the base colour and then glazing the orange until we eventually get to that result. It's not clean, it's not tidy, but it sells the effect. And uh, for a first try, that's not actually too bad, I don't think. But um, yeah, if you're looking for a simpler method, skip the, the white sketches. They're not 100% necessary. You can always build up to the, the brighter blue. But you can see that the grate is a paler colour to the reflected light. The lightsaber is paler to the reflected light. So that's that. That is done and done. It needs a little bit of tidying up. The, uh, the boot has a bit of a tide mark on it, but that's fine. It's pointing down. It's not really going to be seen. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Sorry you didn't get to see the uh, the glazing, but I think that would have sent you all to sleep. Um, if you want a video on how to glaze, let me know and uh, we'll sort something out. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. That's no moon.